and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of the Federal Reserve Bank. We the people have exchanged one master for another, and we didn't even know it. That's pretty interesting. Well, again, in 1913, the Federal Reserve Act, December 24th, only three congressmen voted on this act. It was over Christmas time. Like, let's, let's get the most important thing, a central bank install, instilled in the community for all people in, in this country, millions and millions of people. But let's do it over, let's do it over Christmas break where nobody's going to be in to vote on it. That's pretty sneaky. Congress was never even properly called back into session. These are acts of a corporation, and they're acts of fraud. Senator Charles Lindbergh from Minnesota said, when President Wilson signs this bill, the invisible government of the monetary power will be legalized, and the worst legislative crime of the ages is perpetrated on the American people. These are the main stockholders in the Federal Reserve privately owned central bank worldwide. It looks like our congressmen would stand, wouldn't stand up for these Excuse me, it looks like they wouldn't stand up against these bankers. Now, in 1917, the Trading with the Enemy Act was formed. This act was implemented to deal with the countries we were at war with during World War I. It gave the president and the alien property custodian, those three words are capitalized, the right to seize the assets of the people included in this act and if they wanted to do business in this country, they would have to apply for a license to do so. Hmm. 1921, the Federal Reserve Bank, the trustee for the alien property custodian, held now over $700 billion in trust. This only happened in four years. In 1933, it was time to revisit the bankruptcy for the United States. Remember, we're four years into a major, major depression, recession, whatever you want to call it. It was bad. The 70-year cycle of the Civil War bankruptcy became due for renegotiations. FDR took our gold and gave us basically Federal Reserve notes and a Social Security in exchange. The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto in law. It is meant to mean in practice, but not necessarily ordained by law. We already discussed de facto. So, status in name only under the emergency war powers. With the constitutional Republican form of government dormant, the receivers of the bankruptcy adopted a new form of government for the United States without the people's consent. This new form of government called democracy, being an established socialist communist order under a new governor for America. This act was instituted and established Okay, now hear me out. This act was instituted and established by transferring and or placing the office of the Secretary of Treasury to that of the Governor of the International Monetary Fund. Public Law 94-546-AJ Section HR 13955 reads in part United States Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. 1933. Property taxes. In the 1933 bankruptcy, the United States government collateralized the private land of the people. They put a lien on your property. They borrowed money against our private lands. They were then mortgaged. That's why we now pay property taxes. And instead of us going for lodial title or in a lodial title or being educated in free and clear title, we're now educated in deeds, trust deeds, grant deeds. 1933, Trading with the uh, Enemy Act was amended. March 9th, Public Laws of the 73rd Congress, Title I, Section 1, page 48, Statute 1, amended the Trading with the Enemy Act, and all American citizens were made enemy combatants. What? 
all American citizens under the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1933 were now classified by Congress as enemy combatants. Try to get some water. Um, well, that kind of sounds like Homeland Security today, where conservative Christians are domestic terrorists. It also sounds like Homeland Security today, where veterans of foreign wars, United States veterans, guys who went to Iraq, women who served in Afghanistan, you guys are classified by your own de facto government as a domestic terrorist. Sounds like we're replaying 1933 again. That's interesting. Kind of upsetting. In 1933, Emergency Banking Act, President Franklin Roosevelt signed into law the Emergency Banking Act, which called for a specific and extraordinary session of Congress, Proclamation 2038. At that session, he presented a bill, an act, to provide for relief in the existing national emergency in banking for other purposes. And in this act of March 9, 1933, it states in Title I, Section 1, the actions, regulation, rules, licenses, orders, and proclamations heretofore and hereafter made by the President of the United States or the Secretary of the Treasury since March the 4th, 1933, pursuant to the authority conferred by Subdivision B of Section 5 of the Act of October 6th of 1917, as amended, are hereby approved and confirmed. This means that any actions, orders, or proclamations made by the President hereafter taken are hereby approved and confirmed by his own authority and no supervision needed. Wow, I need that job. Nineteen thirty three, gold illegally illegal, excuse me, to possess. I want you to hear me. This is critical. I didn't learn this until I got into the Republic a couple of years ago. Nineteen thirty three, gold illegal to now possess. Executive order sixty one zero two. This is what FDR enacted so that gold could be made illegal to possess and impose hefty fines up to $10,000 and 10 years in prison for violators. This action also forced the American people to have a license or permit to do anything, driving, owning a vehicle, doing business of any kind, hunting, fishing. In other words, that added more money to the coffers to pay the interest of the national debt of the bankruptcy. There were no licenses required prior to this legislation. None of the taxes, taxes existed in 1900 that exist today. Also in 1933, well, they were really busy in this year. Present and future private properties hypothecated to pledge property as security or collateral for the debt. The federal United States hypothecated all the present and future properties, assets and labor, and their subjects 14th Amendment U.S. citizen to the Federal Reserve System. In return, the Federal Reserve System agreed to extend the Federal United States Corporation all the credit money substitute that it needed. In the 1933 bankruptcy, the United States government collateralized the private lands of the people. A lien. Remember, they borrowed money against our private lands. They were mortgaged. So, again, in 1933, property ownership Senate document number 43, known as Senate Resolution 62, it's dated April 17, 1933. The ultimate ownership of all property in the state, individual so-called ownership, is only by virtue of government, i.e. law, and subordinate to the necessities of law. It does not matter how we pay for things because the state owns everything. Anyway, we own nothing at this time. We think we do. The laws say we don't. One last final thing, and then we're going to move towards discussion. Washington, D.C. in 1944 deeded, was deeded to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Under the Bretton Woods Agreement, deeded Washington, D.C. to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. The 
IMF is made up of wealthy people that own most of the banking industries of the world. It is an organized group of bankers that have taken control of most governments of the world, so the bankers run the world. Congress, the IRS, and the president work for the IMF. The IRS is not a United States government agency. It is an agency of the IMF. Refer to Diversified Metal Products versus IRS. CV-93-405E-1. J E U S D C D I. Also, Public Law 94-564. Also, Senate Report 94-1148, page 5967. Also, Reorganization Plan Number 26, Public Law 102-391. So, ladies and gentlemen, education is key. We've only gone through a very short span. We, we actually skipped over a lot of really what needs to be discussed. This is just the raw, deep-rooted fraud that was done by the de facto government called the United States Corporation. This is why we are so grieving today. This is why we are debating on, on August the 3rd whether they are going to increase the debt limit of $15 trillion to whatever. I was just watching today a video of the assets of the United States Congress. It is deplorable. I'm number one. Their criminal records are amazing. They should be uh, aligning themselves with. Uh, um, I just don't understand why backgrounds aren't done more carefully on the United States congressmen. Number one. Number two. Um, their assets are pretty incredible, and uh, I could list them out on this call, but I, I don't want to. Um, you can easily find the United States Congress assets. It's funny. They get into office, and all of a sudden, they double, they triple, they quadruple. Some of them go up 13,000% in four years. Did you hear me? I said some of these congressmen, their net worth goes up 13,000% in two to three to four years. So what is wrong with this government that would allow for such a theft over the last 150 years against the American people and would allow for themselves to continue to line their own pockets all in the name against that liberal or against that conservative fight, fight, fight. The Democrats are doing it against the Republicans. The Republicans are doing it against the Democrats except they all seem to get rich while we get fleeced. Ladies and gentlemen, I yield the floor for any comments from my co-host. Uh, good evening, Kelly. Kelby. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thank you for uh, stepping in. I have nothing else to say. My voice is dust. Okay. Uh, that was a fabulous job. So many specific details and acts. What I wanted to add to it, uh, my uh, my thoughts grabbed on a couple of key words that you were using. You used the word land. You used the, property, uh, the word property. You used the word deed, title, certificate, uh, things like that. There was another uh, key word in referencing a couple of so-called acts by Congress as resolutions. You also used uh, the phrase uh, Reorganization Act Number 26 in talking about a um, new updated uh, issue of the IRS code that came out in the early 1950s. That one may have actually been 1950. Uh, for people who are new to this endeavor of uh, looking at history, looking at law, and coming to be awakened to understand what we're talking about, what we're really addressing in the fact that how this thing, this situation that we're in today has been specifically built brick by brick to create the kind of prison and uh, um, diminishing returns that the American people are experiencing today. What I'm 